So the forest region of the Fallout 76 map, it's always been a favorite area of mine. I think the trees are more forgiving if you want to build there. It just always has that peaceful vibe and why I've always been drawn to it. There's a lot of good places to build along the river. And actually, if you kind of travel from above the lumber mill and head east up toward Vault 51, there's some really nice places. So a couple of people asked me if I'd be willing to do a tutorial on the Old River bait shop. And I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. This is a longer build, so I added some timestamps in the description. So when placing the camp, especially building around the tree, I try to get the camp module up in the tree. I'm sure you can get it higher, but it just gives a little bit extra height. And that can be a difference between setting an upper roof piece. Here I just wanted to kind of show some of the blueprints that are going to be used. As you can see, it's mostly floating walls. And these blueprints aren't hard to make. If you haven't made one, the few people that stumble across this probably have, but if you haven't, there's really good tutorials by amazing builders, you know, Mr. Church, uh, Lucy Jane plays. I, it's just too many to actually list. But here's one just in case. You're going to put a mat down, wall, catwalk, put a little doohickey floor item on it, and blueprint it. And you have a floating wall. Having a pole blueprint will help, and the standard flamer trap and if you have the small generator that's a big help so anytime we start a build foundation is the most important here the main issue that we're looking at is we want to get the steps the left side to kind of clip into the tree or just be a little bit off of the tree but at the same time we want to make sure that we can seat that forward foundation because that's going to be part of the porch eventually. I think we have it set pretty good so we're just going to check the height to make sure we don't have foliage popping up through the foundations and even when you think you have it right you log back into your camp and the tree will be there. So the next important part is setting this foundation. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that the floor of the treehouse we're about to build will be level with the top of the steps. And I know from building here that that level is a wall and a half wall. And you can adjust that just with pushing the height of the foundation or changing it. That looks pretty good. So at this point, we're gonna basically double check, set a roof piece down. Without actually snapping it in place. That's just to make sure that when that roof is there, that we're lined up. And at this point, I know that half wall is where I need to be to start the work platform. And we're just gonna build that platform out. It's amazing I can clip that platform into rock, but you give me an inch of a tree trunk and uh, you know, it doesn't work. So 
Now we want to just kind of line up where the door will be on the treehouse. This is actually below where it would be. Um, the door actually would be on top of that door piece. But we're not really concerned with that. We're just concerned with kind of the alignment when you look up the stairs where it sits in that the angle going up to the door here we want to make sure that we're not too close to the tree so our roof pieces will snap in and I'm a little conservative on it I'll move out a little further because there's nothing more frustrating than building this whole structure and trying to snap in your roof pieces and they don't go. So now we can just start the blueprint, lay it down of what this treehouse structure is gonna kind of look like. And I've done this a couple times uh, during the recording. So usually I don't get it in the first try, uh, but after you do it a few times, you kind of get the, the layout. And at this point, we'll go ahead and delete the stairs. That wall, we don't need them. And we're gonna start placing the support structure, our roofs, and the main thing is to make sure that the it's slanted down toward the trunk. And then the normal. I actually learned to use a generator to activate the uh, flame or trap from one of Lucy Jane plays uh, tips and tricks. It was a game changer. I wasn't bouncing in and out of the free cam mode constantly. I mean, throughout this video, I just want to point out my incredible flame trap skills. The support pieces are done. So now we're gonna add some half walls. And this would be the support structure to add more roof pieces that will be the floor of the treehouse. Important part of this is to make sure that the high part of the roof is trunk side. So sloping down away from it. And I'll just say that I'll put it a link in the description, but Aussie Kitty Cat did an amazing tutorial on tree houses and it's definitely worth the watch if you haven't, probably most of you have. I mean, look at that flame trap. I've tried so many configurations I still mess up my flame traps, break them, you know. All right, we're starting to make some progress and now we're gonna put the walls of the treehouse in so important there is 
to make sure outer wall is facing out and it has a tendency to try to flip and if it does and you set it down then, you're ha then you have to flame trap everything below it the two half pieces in the, the wall to change it so it's just a pain now here you're gonna see that once I find it I'm just gonna test fit the roof pieces to make sure that they'll go in because I'd like to leave it out. It's a good time to, once we break all these support pieces out, this is a good time to start decorating. It's so much easier with the roof off and we know that they're gonna fit so we can wait and put them on when we want. Typically when you break these out, you can only delete the bottom one, the bottom half piece. The top half piece, the upper half piece will not uh, delete out until you actually repair the roof above it and drop it down into the floor, floor configuration. But for some reason, it let me delete both of them. I don't know why. Someone smarter than me probably knows, but I'll take it. Okay, so now we can drop the upper roof pieces down and that's going to be our floor. And I'll just say, out of my past experiences, uh, be careful when you're doing this and not delete pieces. I've done it so many times because I rush. It's a pain. And we might as well repair the uh, support structure. I think I break this later and have to repair it again. Who knows? So at this point, we want to go ahead and fit the actual access door to the treehouse. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a scrappy build, right? It's not gonna be perfectly straight. We're not doing a modern house build. So as I say, don't sweat the small stuff. So I was just checking the stair placement and it looks pretty good. Uh, I would suggest putting carpets down if you're going to put carpet. Um, you can also change the floor style if you want to right now. Because at this point, once you get the carpets down, we'll get a dividing wall in the space and then you can continue decorating it. And this is just the uh, fine blueprint, the floating wall. And so in the first piece, it is pretty easy. Usually I don't have to break the wall to get the second piece in, but I think there was some collision with the tree that was making it difficult. So this seemed to work at least a little bit.
Let's throw some modern wallpaper on there, why not? There I am repairing the support structure, roof pieces, I, I don't know what happened to them. Maybe some mole rats. And now the stairs. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can use, I think, um, I've seen some floating stair blueprints, um, but I think the spiral stairs look pretty good. And to do that, we're gonna have to go a little bit backward. We need to break this wall and delete the floor piece, but we'll be able to repair that. It's not a big deal. And if you don't have a blueprint for these stairs, I do have a tutorial uh, for that. And it's just another time consuming thing, but I think worth it. So now we're just gonna lift up a few of those floor pieces because to try to place those stairs without breaking these, it's just, it's a nightmare. And I could just place the stairs, you know, you say, well, why not just set the stairs on top of the floor piece? Well, it's a bench. So normally we'd be able to merge that bottom bench down into like foundation. So you wouldn't have that huge gap before you go up onto the stairs. And if you don't do that, your character is just gonna butt right up against it and stand there. So I thought, why not just set the stairs on the bottom piece and then drop the floor piece down and it should basically clip into them and you shouldn't have that high gap. And this is finicky. It's a little time, time consuming to get it the way you want. And we want to break them at this point. And because of my amazing flamer trap skills, I have to do it twice. Now we're gonna work on repairing the wall we deleted and the floor. And it's simple. We already have everything lined up, so we just take a floating wall. And we know that it's a half wall. We're gonna add our floor piece to it. Do that we're gonna have to break the adjacent pieces and we can set that in and we're gonna break it so we can throw the wall up which we'll have to break. I mean, look at this aim. It's amazing. There we go. And then once we get it, once it is broken, we can go ahead and delete that support wall, but you need to drop the floor piece, or I'm sorry, uh, lower the roof, change it. You want to throw your rug down, and then once that rug's down, if that's where you want it, repair your uh, steps. And I think that actually turned out pretty good. And the bottom of the steps, you want to make sure they're not sitting forward, sticking out of that bottom support 
roof piece. So now we can start working on the lower structure. I'm not going to double wall it. I think most people are the few that see this probably already know how to do it. Um, and if not, there's a ton of tutorials out there on how to. It's a simple process. And the nice thing, I love having that f a floating platform working with those stairs because those stairs are a nightmare. And again, I mean, it takes me a couple days to build this uh, with decorating and we have the roof off of this area. So it's a good time to kind of see what you want to do. I think I'm just put a couch and something else in there, but you get the idea. It's so much easier to do it with that roof off. And it gives you a break. Dusk, dawn, I don't know. But now that we have the bottom structure started, that gives us a platform that we can build off for the upper platform. And we're gonna use a floating wall. I know that with these stairs and a suitcase with the floating wall on top of it, it gives you the height that you need. So it's just a matter of trying to line up the angle at this point. I didn't do bad on the first try, but because I'm a masochist, I'm gonna try to do it again and it'll probably be in the exact same spot but you know why not that looks pretty good so we have our first floating upper platform piece, the floor. So we'll just snap another one. Well, you know, after we go backwards again, but these are easy fixes. It's not looking too bad. Another day another 76 build experience. So at this point, we wanna go ahead and get the roof part of the platform. We're just gonna use the floating wall. You could, you could just leave it without a roof and have an open upper platform. I think putting a roof on it or a cover just gives it more interest. And it's simple, so why not? So, as far as floating, this is where, well, let me say, this is where the uh, pole blueprint comes in to play. And remember, this that foundation is actually gonna be a porch foundation, so you wanna give room for railings. And as I was saying, I'm not a big proponent of floating items. I mean, there's some amazing floating things out there, but for this type of build, you need to have some 
support, I guess would be the right word. Structural support. We'll place the rear supports right on the roof. And then that'll enable us to lift up the roof and put the bottom supports in. And every time I've built this, it's been different. It lines up different, which is kind of cool because the way it comes down into the house is different each time. And I think that gives it character. So we're making progress. At this point, I just wanted to show some porch work and how to incorporate vines. I'm sure there's probably other ways to do it. This is just the way I found it's easy to me. Main thing is to make sure the height is correct. And on this train, I know that a suitcase in the floating wall with vines gets me that height. And if you think you're far enough out, pull it back just a little bit more. We'll need to flame trap that because it will not seat in with it uh, not broken. So we'll get the flame trap out. And it'll just snap right in. The other side, it's a different level of terrain, so we're just going to lift it up using a different stash box. And that's, like anything, trial and error. But honestly, it's really quite simple. It's a good idea to leave the vines broken. That way, when you go to put the porch railing in it'll snap in place sometimes if it sits the vines sit back far enough they'll snap in but this just is the easy way if they're already broken They don't look too bad. So now I want to work a little bit on the front porch. And we're going to use, well first we're going to set these steps. The concrete steps actually look pretty good. I know I did rocks that were merged, but I kind of like the look of that. And the chain leak, it's a no brainer. That stuff, pretty much goes anywhere. But if I were to move into a old bait shop, I would put some chain link fence on the front porch, at least this side. And again, you just want to leave room to get those rails in. And now we're starting to look like a bait shop. Structurally, I think we're getting to a good point. Now, I've got to snap in these angled pieces. It's important stuff. And you're going to see that for some reason they disappear and I have to put them back again. I don't know, mole rats again.
So we pretty much have the treehouse structure done and hopefully at this point you would have it decorated. If not, I'm going to throw a little dartboard in here, even though you can't do anything with it. And you'll see we have a generator, so that's simple. You just drop down one of the support roofs and slap in a power conductor or power, whatever it is. And we're good to go. Now to close off that area, you just put an angle piece on it. It snaps in on that side. Opposite side, it won't snap in, but we'll get to that. And now we can finish off the roof. And we know how exciting this part is. Fireplaces, why not? I mean, we are using fire. Amazing, amazing skills. Okay, so it's time to do a little decorating since we got that done. Good time to change those roof pieces into something that's bearable. I gotta get those angle pieces back in. We know how important that is. There we go. And the window. Now if that ankle piece on top doesn't snap in, do the opposite one. It'll snap in and then change it. Now on this side, to cap off the bottom part, it won't snap in. So we actually have to use a floating wall. And I know this terrain, that stash box, and a floating wall gives me the height that I need. So it's just a matter of getting the angle. And unfortunately, it snaps it in pretty well, but yep, it's hard to delete it. But this awesome person, Vlad, or Vlad, uh, I went to Lucy Jane Plays, their Discord, and I put a question about how I was stuck and how could I get angled piece off and he said change it to concrete perfect but he's smart like that so after a little tetris there we go we got it And I wanted to kind of just throw in um, a little, I guess, work with the vines. Apparently, 76 has a person with 
a hedge trimmer that goes around and squares off every vine in Appalachia. I mean, perfectly square, every one. I don't know why we don't have electric hedge trimmers as weapons. I think, I think we need that. But basically what we can do here is by changing the distance using stashed boxes or whatever, we can kind of stagger that length. We can make it look more natural. And it's just using the floating wall. And if you have trouble, you're actually probably in too far. The way the vines sit on that wall, they're kind of out a little bit. So just move it back and they'll snap. And we're gonna put a bramble down. I think that's the right word. I like bramble. And then you gotta have a broken stove on the porch. And the fencing. I mean, I know that it's not gonna go against that pole and my amazing flame track skills. I mean, I got the bottom one. I even tried to set it on the generator. You know, that's not gonna work. So now I'm gonna get the top one. We're gonna knock that out. Knowing that the fence is still not gonna go in. So what you would do is a smart, smart person would delete those two poles. We have the pole inside the house. We could just drop the roof once we, after we put in the fences and put the poles back on. And at this point, we can go ahead and delete our work platform. And I leave that as long as I possibly can, because every time I've deleted it before I'm done building, there's something I needed to go fix.